So number one then from paper two of the 2015 new hire, a nice little starter question, lines in a triangle, the usual one. Find the equation of a couple of lines and get the point of intersection. And there you go, nine marks. The only thing is make sure you use the right lines because the mark will be quite severe if you don't. First part, show the equation of the altitude from C is, and you have to get show it in this required form here. And notice it gives you a little starter by indicating it. Well, it doesn't show one particular feature there though. Still, that should be a straightforward four marks if you do it properly. So the essential feature is the altitude meets the opposite side at right angles. So the key thing here is a perpendicular gradient. Most of the marks are for that. If you don't use a perpendicular gradient, you're only going to get one out of four. One out of four because you won't be able to demonstrate this result either if you've done something wrong. So the first part would be to say this. Right, if that line is perpendicular to this line, I'll get its gradient from this line. First, I'll take a note of these coordinates. So, starting off then, get the gradient of AB. The gradient of AB will be, now there's only one mark for getting this gradient, so you can set it out whichever way you like, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, or just the difference in y over the difference in x, whichever you prefer. So the difference in the y coordinates, that would be negative five, take away seven, and the difference in the x coordinates would be negative one, take away negative five, or I'll just go straight in with plus five, so we've got negative 12 over 4, which is negative 3. There's no need to show every single little grain of arithmetic. There's only one mark for getting this answer. Now the next part is for getting the gradient of the altitude. However we wish to call it. You might say the perpendicular gradient. You might say the gradient of the altitude. But I think I'll just go with the perpendicular gradient. And again, there's no need to demonstrate this. It just says use the property of perpendicular lines. If that's negative three, this will be the negative of the reciprocal. That will be a third. And simply stating that gets you the mark. There's no mention in the marking scheme of having to justify, first of all, that the product of these two should come to negative one. Hence, it's a third. Now, if you've used a midpoint there, then these two marks aren't available to you. And that only leaves you one mark that you could possibly get for this question, which is simply by feeding things into the equation. So when you put down that general equation of a line, y minus b is mx minus a, which I'll just put in inverted commas. According to the marking scheme, you're not required to state the form you're looking for. The marks don't start to appear and start, until you start to feed numbers into it. So this is the only point I know in the line y minus the y coordinate is the gradient one third x minus the x coordinate that gets you a mark but you can't stop there because you have to demonstrate it looks like this and one thing is you can't just say oh i can see that that's going to turn into that so i'll just put it down no you wouldn't get the fourth mark if you jump straight from there to there you're going to have to go through some algebra well the first thing would be get rid of that fraction anyway Take the 3 across and multiply. 3y minus 9 is x minus 13. And that would be sufficient. It does say that there is R intermediate lines of working. You could now just go from here to there quite easily. Well, you could tidy up the numbers first, possibly, and put it into that sort of form. 3y equals x, and taking that across as plus would be minus 4 because without this to guide you, that would probably be what you would aim for as your working equation. And then you can say, I will just put that the other way around, x minus 3y equals 4, and there's the fourth mark. Now part B, find the equation of the median from B. The median from B means from the vertex B, you go to the middle of the opposite side. You go to the midpoint. Maybe I'll just give it a name there for three marks. If you go from the wrong corner, or if you use some sort of perpendicular business, you'd only get one out of these three marks. 
So the first thing would be, what's that midpoint? Whichever way you want to call it, maybe I'll just call it midpoint first of all. The midpoint will be halfway between the x's, halfway between the y's. You go halfway from one point to the other. So halfway between the x's. Again, there's one mark for this. If you can see it because it's fairly straightforward, then you can just write it down. If you think you might be safer putting down the calculation, put down the calculation. So add the numbers and half it. 3 and 7. You know what the answer to that is. Halfway is 5. But if you just want to follow that pattern, so I'll carry on with that. 7 plus 3 and half it. So that means the midpoint, which I've called M, is going to be 4, 5. That's the mark. Now, to get the equation of this line, you'll need its gradient, but you won't be using anything perpendicular. You'll be getting the gradient because you know the points at either end of that line segment there. So, the gradient of, I'm calling it BM, will be y2 minus y1, difference in the y-coordinates over the difference in the x-coordinates. No marks for writing that down. So that would be difference in the y-coordinates. 5, take away negative 5. I'll go in with 5 plus 5. 4, take away negative 1. 4 plus 1. So that gives me 10 upon 5, which is 2. The gradient of that median is 2. That's a mark. And as you may expect, the final mark is for feeding it in. Into y minus b equals mx minus a. So feeding that in, you've got y minus. Now you're spot for choice. Which one will I use? It's actually better having the negatives, because then I can say y, take away the y coordinate, would be y plus 5 times gradient of 2 times. x, take away the x coordinate, would be plus 1. Which tidies up to y equals 2x plus 2, take away 5, minus 3. There's the third mark. Now, since there wasn't a specified form for this, unlike the very first one, then that mark could have been obtained there, or any other rearrangement of it. And part C. So what's the coordinates of the point of intersection of the altitude from C and the median from B? What's this point here? Well, it'll be the intersection of the lines. So that'll be simultaneous equations, whichever way you care to do it. So you've got a choice of, well, in this form here, I would use substitution since this starts y equals. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say substitute 2 in 1. So wherever you see a y in number 1, number 2 substitutes in for it. So it reads x minus 3y, now the substitution, 2x minus 3, equals 4. Now there's no marks yet. The way they've allocated the marks for this part, for these two marks, is 1 for x, 1 for y, whichever way you find them. So I'll have to go a wee bit further before I get my mark. x minus 6x plus 9 equals 4. Negative 5x equals, taking that across negative 5, so x equals 1. That's a mark. Feeding it back in. Substitute x equals 1 in 2. And it will read y equals 2 times 1 minus 3, which means y equals negative 1. There's the other mark. Now, of course, that's the way it's written down in the marking scheme because it does, after all, say in the question, find the coordinates, and those are, strictly speaking, the coordinates. That's the x-coordinate, that's the y-coordinate. But I'd like to finish off by saying, so the intersection is the point 1, negative 1. So that wasn't a bad question to start off with, if you were careful.